Despite living what I considered a healthy, active lifestyle, I started getting fat. At age 30, I noticed my metabolism slowing down, my weight increasing, and the temptation to get caught in life's bad habits, such as eating out to excess, drinking, and living a sedentary lifestyle intensifying. Instead of yielding to these pressures, I hired a film crew and decided to use myself as a guinea pig in a fitness experiment. Over the months that followed, I learned how to exercise in a safe and effective manner, rediscovered the joys of healthy home-cooked meals, and achieved some noteworthy results. Now, I'm editing the footage I compiled in order to create a new documentary, which I call I Want Abs. If you're someone who wants to get in shape but don't know how to do it, I Want Abs is for you. My movie's on schedule to be released on June 1st, 2016, but you can pre-order it now at iwantabsmovie.com. While I put the final touches on my feature film, I've created this mini-series to give you a sneak peek of how I trained to lose weight, shed fat, and build muscle. If you like what you see, perhaps you should consider doing the workouts with me. I'll include the guidelines for the workouts at the end of each video. If you're a newbie like I was, I recommend working out two to three times per week for 50 minutes. And you can absolutely positively mix and match the workouts from these videos in any way you like. Thank you for watching and good luck. Dude, I mean, yeah, and they, they rebranded their logo, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Because I got a second yellow one recently, and like you said, the handle's a little different. It's yeah. So it's nice. Hey, All yeah, right. thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Good yeah. to have you here. So, um... I want to make sure that I get all the basics down so that I don't injure myself, and mm -hmm. I do it correctly because I don't, you know, I don't want to... As I'm building muscle, I don't want to build it improperly. Okay. So I was hoping you could help me out with that today. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. So we're going to start, we'll start you with the swing um, and uh, <clears throat> start you with just a 12 kilogram. So I'm going to start you with the kettlebell swing, okay, and um, we've seen a lot of misapplications of the swing. You see people doing a squat and a throw with the shoulders. You see people folding at the lower back. Um, <clears throat> really what this is, it's a hip hinge movement, okay. So what that means is <clears throat> if you press in at the hip joint here mm -hmm. and you push the hips back, all right, allowing the knees to bend slightly as you do that, mm -hmm. okay? Um, <clears throat> what that does, that pulls the chest down. As I come down to this point, it loads the hamstrings and the glutes, okay? Now, <clears throat> this is not my lower back. My lower back is just stabilizing at this point. And from here to come back up, we're gonna contract the hamstrings, contract the glutes, drive the hips forward, mm -hmm. okay? And that's actually what's driving the movement. We're not, we're not throwing with the shoulder at all. The arm is a rope. Um, <clears throat> now to make that happen, we have two things that are very important, all right, the two main fundamentals of a swing, and really the snatch and the clean as well, is deflection and connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what deflection is, is if, as I get to the top of the movement, all right, <clears throat> if I, f from here, if I squeeze the glutes and drive the hips forward, mm -hmm. all right, I'm not, I'm not folding my back backwards, I'm just driving my hips forward, okay? This deflects me, mm -hmm. okay? So what this does is this is gonna help me in a couple ways. One, it's going to counterbalance the weight, okay? So instead of me standing up here and having the weight out in front of me, which is generally kind of loading my shoulders and loading my lower back, if I drive the hips forward, all right, and I keep that shoulder in the socket by stacking it, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna actually connect this weight out here to the rest of my body. So my whole body's basically supporting the weight and counterbalancing it. What it's also gonna do is gonna give me, it's gonna help me gain more power on the clean and the snatch, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it sets me up to get connection, which is one of the most important aspects of this, because this is what keeps you from hurting yourself, okay? What you see a lot of people do originally, all right, is when they, when they screw this up, is they start to drop that hand, and as that hand comes down, they immediately pull the hips back. They're usually afraid they're gonna hurt their back, mm -hmm. okay? But what happens is that kettlebell gains speed, and right about here, whiplashes through the legs. Okay, and that sends a whiplash up through the shoulder, into the neck, and down into the back. Okay, so actually by trying to protect ourselves, we're generally hurting ourselves in three different places. So by deflecting back and waiting for the kettlebell to come to you, and allowing the kettlebell to do the movement, we connect that arm to the body, and now that weight is connected to the body again, just like it was up here when we were deflecting. And this allows me, this is gonna actually allow the kettlebell to push the hips back into that hip hinge movement, and then as we come back, the hamstrings, they elongate, 
and we get what's called stretch reflex. They automatically want to come back forward. Okay? So as they come back forward, we just add a little bit of a pop by again driving into that deflection. And that, by being connected, that pop is what actually throws the kettlebell. Okay. Okay. So our, what we really focus on initially is that connection. So we're not actually using our arms at all. We're just no. it's all up hips. No, arms are rope. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so what, what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you just start off and just work on that, on feeling that connection. Okay. Okay. You're not going to get into a full swing, mm -hmm. but if we're just kind of we just work on that that movement a little bit, and it's not going to be the full full hip hinge. What I'm just going to have you do is just pick up the kettlebell, and you're going to just hold on to it and just kind of rock back and forth a little bit. Just, just a light hip hitch. And just feel, feel how that weight connects to the body. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> so here you go. So grab it, you're gonna pick it up. You're gonna turn your thumb toward your body and just start rocking. Not too much, just, just feel the rock, just feel the weight. Try to keep that arm connected the whole time. Because you shouldn't be Right now, you're not popping hard enough to really lift that weight, so just connect, stay connected. Okay, so one of the things we do, you can go ahead and stop, with people who are actually having trouble with this, is we'll actually tie them up. <coughs> All right, so to help people sometimes get the connection, what we have to do is actually tie your arm to your body. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead around here. And this guy's nice because it's going to be real tight. It's not going to give you much of an option. This will eliminate the desire to use my hand. Yes. All right. So go from there. You don't move too much because it will snap off, off of you. All right. So I'll go ahead and help you out here. So now keep that thumb pointing toward your body and just rock with it. We don't need to actually get a full hip hinge, just feel the movement, okay? What you wanna be feeling here is you wanna be feeling the weight pull you back and feel your body respond by just naturally coming forward. That's all we're working with is just what the body's doing naturally, what the kettlebell's doing with you, okay? You're just building a kind of a symbiotic relationship between you and the, you and the bell, okay? Yeah. This, this is how we avoid injury. This is how we build power. Okay, this is how we actually move the kettlebells with this connection. Okay, nice deflection. Nice deflection. As you see the knees kind of locking out a little bit at the top, mm -hmm. driving the hips forward. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, all right, good. We're going to untie you. All right. Okay, so, so now, <clears throat> now I'm going to let you start to create more of that disconnection. Okay, so now as you come up, you're going to add in that, that hip drive at the top, okay, and you're going to pop that kettlebell, mm -hmm. okay? When it gets up there, we're not immediately pulling the hips back. You want to pop it up, it's going to float, and then you're going to wait for it to come back to you, okay? So it's not, it's not you doing this the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's you coming up, wait a second, drop, and then back, okay? okay? And drop the bell. Just wait a little bit longer. Not bad. Wait just a little bit more for that connection. <clears throat> okay. So now one of the things we, we can work on too, you can work on acceleration. Uh -huh. So you're still, you can wait a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. You're still at a point now where that the bell is right about, he, about here and you're starting to pull back mm -hmm. before it actually connects to you. So if you let the bell hit you, let your arm hit you, okay, it'll drive you back a little bit faster. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you since you naturally want to pull the hips back a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you by just accelerating the bell a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I feel that difference. Yeah. So now the kettlebell is doing the work to bring you back. You're staying connected. Hip hinge a little more. That's it. Drive those hips. Good. Good.
Yeah. All right. The other arm. <clears throat> wow, that really does make a big difference. Yeah, you feel that power coming back. And what we're what we're working with is basically physics. Okay? Yeah. So it's equal and opposite reaction. So the kettlebell is going to come back and drive with a certain amount of force back. Your body is going to respond with the same force to come forward. Yeah. Okay? And it's going to naturally do that. And if you want more force, you just add a little at the top. Okay? Um, <clears throat> now, from there, okay, one of the things that, that we see with you, your technique is a little bit different. You don't have as much of a hip hinge as most. Mm -hmm. Most, you know, a lot of people when they come down, they're really driving down into it. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see some guys, I mean, they're, they're here at the bottom. It's not wrong what you're doing. You're still actually kind of working in that hip hinge. Mm -hmm. And you're still, you've got that pendulum swing going, but it's just a very small swing and it's more of a twist with you. You kind of twist one side, which is fine. Okay. Um, it's not as powerful, but it's very efficient. Okay. So <clears throat> you'll see a lot of these things. You'll see, you know, I could, I could line up five people and you'll actually see while maintaining fundamentals, you'll see five different swings a lot of the time. Um, and it's just, you have to work with the fundamentals and with your, your body and, and with the way it wants to move. From there, you know, we can go ahead, we can actually, we can move on to the clean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> as we move on to clean, basically what we're doing is we're utilizing everything we learn in the swing. The swing is that foundation to the clean. Okay. From there, instead of when you come to the top, instead of that arm coming away from the body, mm -hmm. all right, we go back to that connection again. Okay. okay, so <clears throat> this time though the connection never comes apart. We actually maintain connection at the, the entire time with this elbow, just really dug into the into the body, mm -hmm. into the torso. So <clears throat> when I come up, okay, instead of that normal disconnection you see, we just come back up. Mm -hmm. We keep that elbow tight. All right, we move around the kettlebell. You hinge at the elbow. And just yep, hinge at the elbow, and we're utilizing that deflection. Okay, so this is, this is where that deflection really becomes important in the movement because you want the kettlebell on its own to start coming back. Because again, we're not using our arms. We're not pulling it back. So you want to start moving the trajectory in this direction and then you move around the bell. You're not forcing the bell over the hand, mm -hmm. okay? And you're not really even forcing it around the hand. You're, you're just kind of, you're bringing it, you're floating the bell back. And then as you, as you saw with my deflection, I deflect back and then I move back into it and then I just come around the bell, okay? So we're not forcing anything. You just go ahead, like I said, that deflection starts bringing the bell back in this direction, okay? And then I come under. Soft landing. Soft landing, nice and yeah, soft. Right, we're never, your... not smacking, okay? okay? Um, <clears throat> now from there, there are a few other things that are kind of come into play, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll also work on the drop too, but before we get to that, We'll talk about hand insertion. Okay. Okay. When we're holding the bell, okay, you don't want to be over gripping the, the kettlebell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because for a couple reps, that's fine. And there are times when you're going to want to work on your grip. Um, but what that's going to do over the course of time is that's going to tear your hand up. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that kettlebell rolls around inside the palm. And eventually you're going to get blisters, you're going to get hand tears. And it's all these different things that are going to derail your training, okay, and cause you lots of pain. So instead, everybody's a little bit different, but basically the, the goal is you want to hook the fingers on and you can place the thumb, or some people like to come across with the thumb and grab the index finger, mm -hmm. sometimes even going all the way to the, to the middle finger, okay? But we're still maintaining that sort of disconnection of the, of the palm from the bell, okay? When we come up, when we actually get, up, get the kettlebell up in there, when we finish the movement, I'm not, again, I'm not grabbing the kettlebell, okay? So what's happening is I'm basically, I'm just hooking the kettlebell on the thumb and getting this as far onto the wrist as I can. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna be a little different depending on the size of the handle, the size of your hands and your wrists, but this is about where you wanna be. You wanna have about that 45 degree angle coming down mm -hmm. onto the wrist. <clears throat> so this protects my palm, okay, in this area from getting, getting hand tears. Now there's one other thing that we're gonna run into if you're too relaxed coming back down, you'll see a lot of people, they'll take it from here and they'll slide it down the hand. Mm -hmm. 
and catch there, which is fine again for a little while, but eventually that friction is gonna cause head tears. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> instead, what we do is we wanna pinch at the top. And this will help you manipulate a little bit getting it around the wrist. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pinch the bell right here. You wanna create no that, space. that space right there. And what's gonna happen is as the bell comes down, you're gonna maintain that pinch. So, it's, so the bell is essentially going to jump over the middle of the hand. Ah. All right, so when I'm at this point, if I'm pinched, okay, all I have to do is just transfer the weight to the fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Great. just open up. Yeah. Okay, you get that? I get it, yeah. Okay, now the last part is the drop. When we go to drop the kettlebell, mm -hmm. okay, we're utilizing that deflection again. So what you're trying to do essentially is you're trying to go back to, your, to the top of your swing. Okay, mm -hmm. so in order to do that, if I'm here in the rack position, okay, this is your rack position. This is essentially your rest position in a clean. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to exhale, and then I'm going to inhale, kind of drive the hips out a little bit more, mm -hmm. and pull the shoulders back, okay, to pull myself away from the kettlebell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so think, think of like, you know, scary text message. Okay. All right, or smelly kettlebell, whatever, whatever works for you. Okay. okay. Elbows still gonna stay tight to the body. I'm just using my body to move the kettlebell. Okay, so I move away from the bell and the bell will just start to fall and then you add in all those other fundamentals. Cool. Okay, you back, back to, to the swing. Elbow being, show the elbow being tight again. Um, which part, just, just, just right here? Just you keep the elbow tight to the body. Yeah, just. So, so I go, I compress and I open up and I pull the shoulders away but the elbow never leaves. Okay. Okay, so as I go down, just So in essence, your swing is like the base. Yes. And you always go back to the base. Even if you do a different movement, you're gonna right. go, essentially go back to your right. swing. Any hip hinge movement that we're doing, we're always going back to that swing. Okay. okay? Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead, let's, let's have you try it. Yeah, sounds easy enough. In yeah, theory, right. but practice. <laughs> in theory. So, good, turn the, turn the kettlebell toward you, get into that swing. Nice, nice. Not bad. First okay. time doing Yeah, <laughs> first time doing this, right? <laughs> Perfect clean. But that's, that's, Pretty perfect for the most part. Now, the, the one thing we do miss a little bit with mm -hmm. you is at in the rack position. Uh -huh. you, like to, you like to stand up straighter and pull that elbow away from the body. Mm -hmm. All right, if we're looking to, to rest at this point, we want to compress. All right, we want to just bring that elbow down into, yeah. eventually what we're wor working toward is we want to actually be able to drop down and, and place that elbow on top of the iliac crest, on top mm -hmm. of the, that bone at the top of your pelvis. And it's really now, not bad for the back to be no, because you're, again, you're driving those hips forward and you're just sitting in this position. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not putting any strain on the back. Your glutes are tight. They're, yeah, the glutes, yeah. The glutes are tight, but not too tight. Okay. There still has to be a bit of a rest. We're, we're essentially just bone stacking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we lock out the knees. Okay, so we're stacking the legs on top of each other and then taking that elbow and putting it into that iliac crest is going to actually give you another stack. So you want to be, it's going to be a mobility issue. Mm -hmm. Everyone's a little different. Some guys, you'll see some people where they're, they're actually able to get both el get their elbows down into that iliac crest. Mm -hmm. They're really mobile in the, throughout the spine, and they can get them. That's not going to bother them. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to have that, though. All right, everybody's sure. body type is different, and you see a guy with a big belly, that's not going to work. But he'll stick his elbows on top of his belly, and that works out just fine. Mm -hmm. um, guys with big, big barrel chest, they'll take the kettlebells, and they just sit them on top of their chest. So it's so still a rest point. stacking all the weight on your biggest body part that you can Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think my body needs that mobility there. A little bit, and most people do. So like, yeah, here. Yep. Yeah, actually, that's a lot easier. Yeah. Good.
Good. All right. Go ahead and put it down. So, one of the other things before we move any further, we're going to talk a little bit about breathing. Okay. Um, now, there are different types of breathing that you can utilize with kettlebells. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have anatomical and you have paradoxical. Okay. Paradoxical is what we're used to in, in most lifting. It's the exhale on exertion. Okay. So, you know, essentially as I'm coming up, I'm exhaling, you know, driving into the, into the abs, getting that forceful exhale. All right. And then I'm going to inhale to go down. Um, <clears throat> now, there are two different reasons why we would use that one. Okay, one is if we're working with somebody who maybe has an injury or is not very strong yet, um, <clears throat> those people, we're going to want them to actually support the core a little mm -hmm. bit more by allowing for that fluid capsule for them to contract around by breathe, breathing in mm -hmm. on the way down. Because um, <clears throat> really, this is your most vulnerable position. But also with that, we spike the heart rate. Okay, so especially if you're going for fat loss, mm -hmm. one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is you're, you're gonna to wanna to be inefficient. Okay. Okay, and that's gonna be an inefficient way to breathe. That's gonna get the heart rate up because your body's not able to take in as much oxygen because I'm breathing in at the point when my chest is compressed. So I'm not gonna be able to take in as much oxygen at the, at the, at the bottom as I would be if I were up here at mm -hmm. the top. Okay, so if you're going for inefficiency, you wanna go for more of that forceful exhale, mm -hmm. okay? But, but generally what, what I work with and what I teach with kettlebells um, is I do more of an anatomical breathing. And what that is, is that's just the exact opposite. So now, as my chest is compressing, I'm exhaling, mm -hmm. okay? And then as I come up and my chest expands, I inhale, because then I can take in more oxygen, mm -hmm. okay? Um, which is gonna lower my heart rate and, <clears throat> and it's gonna make it easier for me to complete a lot of these movements, especially if you're doing very, very long sets. Um, now, within that anatomical breathing, mm -hmm. you have different breathing cycles you can do as well. So, um, so you have sort of just your, your regular two cycle is just okay. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have you can add in more to that. Okay, so if you're using maybe a heavier weight mm -hmm. and you're going for a longer period of time, you can actually add in a little extra breath at the bottom mm -hmm. so we're exhale and then it's a quick inhale exhale again all right coming up exhale the top okay so actually it's exhaling help it it's gonna go okay. you got that yeah um <clears throat> and so what we do is in a clean and when we get to the snatch as well there's always that recovery breath at the top okay so we're not we're not constantly moving it's you know we're not just all right, you're just mm -hmm. okay. And as you see, there's a there's a breath cycle that happens as we go to drop it too. Mm -hmm. It's exhale, inhale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that exhale allows us to compress, and then we just bounce and inhale as we come up, and then go back into that breathing cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just that relaxed. That's the one cycle, basically. <coughs> now, now we're working in that two cycle a little bit. Good. Now try a couple. Try a couple swings. Uh -huh. You feel that? You did, did a number of reps already um, with the anatomical. Let's. Actually, work a little bit of paradoxical. And so paradoxical again. In going down, uh -huh. and then forceful exhale, exhale okay. to the top. Yeah, that's uh, feel the heart rate start to spike a little bit more. I really do. It's yeah. Whistling like a woodchuck. <laughs> Good. 
Good. Yeah. Okay. Then. All right. Awesome. Feel good with the clean. Next. Yeah. All right. So now from here we move on to the snatch. So these are all. These are your three main hip hinge movements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the snatch is just a big, big extension of that swing, and just like the clean, the kettlebell is going to float. You're going to really utilize that deflection. Okay. Kettlebell is going to float up, and then all we're going to do is move underneath underneath the belt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like the clean, the kettlebell is not coming over the hand. Okay, the hand insertion is exactly the same, and it's just going to come around the, the wrist. Okay, now <clears throat> in the clean, you also notice you deflect back and then you kind of squat under a little bit and catch. Mm -hmm. All right, same thing with the snatch. Now, not everybody's going to do that. Some people want to come up, drive up, and then finish at the top. Mm -hmm. Everything's locked out. Um, that's fine. Again, if you're going for inefficiency, it's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. If you're going for efficiency, not so much. Um, and as you get to a heavier weight, that under, under squat is really going to help you. So that kettlebell comes up, we deflect back, and then once we're in this position, we're actually in a perfect spot to under squat from the belt. Mm -hmm. So once I'm here, I just squat and bring the shoulders back around to that neutral position, mm -hmm. and this is where I finish at what we call fixation. Okay? In fixation, we don't want to have the elbow bent, all right, we don't want the wrist bent, we want all this locked out, we want the shoulder sitting in the socket, all right, the bicep kind of close to the ear, but not the ear close to the bicep, mm -hmm. okay, head's neutral, <sighs> relax in this position. So I keep hearing you say over and over that the kettlebell shouldn't be hitting you. If you're doing the movements correctly, you're actually moving around the, the bell in a way that it's you're just lifting the weight, but it's not actually doing any damage. Right. The hips, the hips are lifting the weight. Okay. And you just move, move around the kettlebell. Yeah. Okay. So it should come around the wrist. Really, ideally, that kettlebell is going to connect your wrist out here. Uh -huh. If it connects back here, a lot of times you're going to get that smack. Okay. But if it connects here, as you're starting to squat under it, then it, usually you're not going to have any kind of a smack because it doesn't have any weight to bring down on you mm -hmm. yet. It's still coming up to the wrist. Cool. Okay. So. Your snatch is just okay. You see that nice and soft. Yeah. You make that look sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make a lot of things look sexy. Um, now, again, uh -huh. with the drop, okay, again, we're going back down to that swing, mm -hmm. okay? So, just like, just like you're clean. Your first, your initial movement is not going to be you throwing the hand out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be you bringing the body back. Okay, so we go back to that deflection. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go ahead. We're going to just turn the hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like the clean, we get that pinch. We're going to let it come down. When the when the elbow hits the body, mm -hmm. we get that connection back. We just drop back to the fingers and let the weight of the kettlebell swing through the legs. Okay, can I see that one more time? Oh yeah. Slow-mo. So slow-mo. All right, we're going to go ahead. We just, we do the exhale. Inhale, pull back. Okay. Arms dropping. Elbow comes to the body. As you see, I still have that pinch. Mm -hmm. And then from here, I'm going to drop to the fingers and turn the hand in as I come down. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's a little bit of a press toward the end there. So remember, getting it up there is going to be all about the hips. Mm -hmm. So get a little bit more of a hip drive there. A little better. Yeah. So this better. is where this is one of those points where your technique that that where you have less of that hip hinge. Uh -huh. This is where it, it may occasionally give you a little trouble because you're not getting as much of a drive through those hips, uh -huh. okay? You so have a tendency to keep your head way up here the whole time, uh -huh. okay? Let the head move with the body because when the head stays up here, the chest stays up here, which means you don't get that hip hinge. Okay, let me try that. Yeah. Better, yeah. better, but also 
So now we're trying to find that happy medium. Okay. Okay. So that was too much. So yeah. So just like just like dating. Uh huh. Okay. You don't want to spend all your time dealing playing with yourself and not paying any attention to your girlfriend, right? Because then she's gonna leave you. Okay. So here, before. there's a total disconnection from your girlfriend, right? Yeah. Um, but and how's that going? <laughs> how's that going? Get some dating tips. Yeah. So you don't want to spend all of your time paying attention to yourself i.e. looking in the mirror uh -huh. and uh, not paying attention to your girlfriend, i.e. the kettlebell, okay? So you want to give her a little bit of attention, okay? okay? But you also don't want to be the creepy stalker guy, uh -huh. okay? Don't, don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave me, all right? All the way through your legs, okay? Okay, what you want to do is just, you know, you want to pay attention, but you want to play it aloof a little bit, uh -huh. okay? So let her pay attention to her as she's coming down a little bit, but as she starts to cross, where you start to start see the floor a little bit, uh -huh. okay? Then you can just let her go, okay? Then you follow, your head comes down to about a neutral mm -hmm. position, you know, probably about four, five, you know, four feet in front of you. Yeah. And then here, your, your chest is down. We're in that position where we can come back up and get more of a drive. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm not, I'm not tucking my chin and placing a lot of strain on, my, on okay. my spine. Okay, we just look for that neutral spine. Easy enough. Okay. That time it popped up, huh? It popped up that time. Yeah. Yeah. It just flies up. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, it's way more efficient. Yeah, so now you have more power. So now that efficiency you had with this weight, doing it the other way, you would actually now pretty much have with a heavier belt. Huh. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. Try the other arm. Much nicer. Okay. That's good, yeah. So now you have extra power to work with while still maintaining a lot of that efficiency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think the tendency is, you know, if I'm in the mirror to see, look at yourself to see where you're at, you know, and right. kind of if there's a comfort zone there. Exactly. But I can feel the, di I can concretely feel the difference when I'm just feeling the motion versus, you know, trying right. to get Looking at yourself and yeah. checking your form. Because really, if you're, if you're doing this right, you should be able to feel the form. Yeah. You don't need to see it. It's all, really, you should be worrying about what you're feeling with the kettlebell more so than what you're seeing with the kettlebell. Because if you're feeling everything properly, if you're feeling that connection, feeling that deflection, mm -hmm. feeling the kettlebell coming around the wrist and not over the wrist, then you're going to be fine. Cool. Okay. Will you show me Turkish get up? Yeah, of course. Seems to be a good core exercise. I've heard it's, you talk about it in class. So. It's a nice one. Um, that one and then that FML press is always fun too all right. <laughs> for an all, all over core movement. Um, so we'll just, I'll go this way. <clears throat> so first things first, whatever we're working with a kettlebell <clears throat> in a Turkish getup, we, no matter how light the kettlebell is, try to pretend the kettlebell weighs 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't want to see people <clears throat> grabbing the bell and just rolling it over with one hand. Okay. <clears throat> you want to roll toward it, get it on the wrist, and just use both hands to come back. Mm -hmm. All right, let it let it sit on the chest for a second here. Can we see that one more time? Yeah, one more time. So roll toward it, place the hand in, just like you would at the top of your clean or your snatch. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to really grab it and work a little bit on that, that tension of the wrist, that's fine. But generally, I like to just stay with that movement to get comfortable with it. And then from here, I just roll back. Mm -hmm. So I'm using both hands. I'm using my body to roll the kettlebell toward me. 
Okay. Now, when we start a Turkish getup, whatever hand the kettlebell is in, mm -hmm. that foot is going to be flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our actual starting point in the getup is here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got kettlebells in my right hand. My wrist is straight. My elbows locked. My shoulders in the socket. I'm not pushing away from the body. All right. I'm just putting the, putting the shoulder on the ground. This foot flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. The knee is up. All right. This one's extended out in front of me. Now my left hand is going to come out to the side. Now everybody's a little bit different, but generally you kind of go for about a 45 degree angle. Some people like to be out to the side a little bit more, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be tucked in because then you can't really use that, that arm to your advantage as much. So our first movement, all right, with the eyes always on the kettlebell, mm -hmm. okay, throughout, throughout most of this movement, you're going to have your eyes directly on the kettlebell. But our first movement is going to be, I'm going to push through my right foot and my right glute, okay, and I'm going to roll onto my left hip and my left shoulder. Mm -hmm. You'll see some people, they, they try to just pop like this. We don't want to do that. We want to keep those hips on the ground and just push and roll. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat within this movement, if we're going for, for a core movement, which is the entire torso, not just the abs, mm -hmm. all right, I immediately get some glute activation and hamstring act activation to get that push. Mm -hmm. But then also to stabilize as I'm doing that, I'm working on my obliques, okay? Mm -hmm. External, internal obliques are working a little bit. And as always, you know, really in, in any kind of a core movement, transverse abdominals are also working as well. Okay. And my shoulder, rotator cuff, all that is going to be working within all this movement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have shoulder issues and you, you can do this correctly, this is a good movement to help work on building that shoulder stability. So now from here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze that oblique a little bit and I'm going to push onto that elbow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, eyes are always on the kettlebell. From here, I'm going to come up onto the hand, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to bridge out here, okay? It's sort of like a combination of a bridge and a side plank, okay? Push up through that leg, through that glute, and come up as high as I can, mm -hmm. because now I need to get my left knee up on, underneath me, okay? So I'm going to get it under as far as I can go and try to straighten it out. We try not to start to go here. We try to bring that knee mm -hmm. into that perfect lunge position, because now all I'm going to do is go ahead and come up. Now I can come to neutral, okay? Mm -hmm. My toes are on the ground. I'm in a perfect lunge position. And from here, I just stand. Okay? Cool. Now coming back down, we're gonna go ahead, take that nice big step back again. All right, drop the knee. All right, any lunge, we always just work, focus on dropping the back knee, mm -hmm. okay? We wanna keep this, keep that nice, you know, 90 degree angle mm -hmm. as best we can. All right, we're going to go ahead and come back now. Eyes go back to the kettlebell. Drop the hand down. We're just reversing the movement. Mm -hmm. So now from here, we go back into that bridge. Kick that foot out. Drop the hips. Okay, and then I'm just going to slide this hand out and roll back. Okay. Great. And that's your Turkish getup. So it seems like in watching you do this, you're making as many straight lines as possible with your body. So when you're here, you have a straight line here. Mm -hmm. You get up, you have a straight line. So it's just a series of... A series of straight lines, yeah. And always always pointing the kettlebell at the ceiling. You'll see a lot of people, they start to, they, if they lose that eye connection with the kettlebell, mm -hmm. you'll see people as they start to come up, that it starts to drop down. Uh -huh. Okay. Now we're getting into a, in dangerous positions and we can most likely drop the bell. So we always want to be eyes on the kettlebell, keep our focus there, Always pointing at the ceiling. Cool. Okay. All right. So grab, roll. Good. Press up. Good. Through the glute. Good. Perfect lunge and stand. Not bad, not bad. You it's don't you don't have to continue looking up uh -huh. when you get to the top. You can actually go go to neutral at that point. Okay. Um, but that's kind of a preference for a lot of people. Good. And so on my lunge, I actually step back first. Yep. Step back first. And drop the knee down. Knee. Yep. To the hand, perfect. 
Now, if you want to get a little more core activation, uh -huh. from that bridge position, uh -huh. right now you're sort of just dropping the hip and sliding the leg. Okay. Lift the hip up, hold it up while you move the leg out in front of you, and then sit down. So from this position, yeah, I'm coming back down. Right, coming back down. So lift, sit, there you go, now sit down. And that's just adding more of that tension in the movement. Okay. Okay. Other side, other exercise. So now, from uh -huh. here, if you want to stay on the ground and move the belt, what you're about to do, that's perfect, you just grab the handle with both uh -huh. hands and you just slide it on the ground around the head. There so you you're not lifting, giving yourself the possibility to drop it on your face? Yeah. <laughs> For a good workout, you know everybody's everybody's different. I would generally start um, because it's such a long movement. Um, <coughs> I would probably start with maybe about five reps, okay. a couple sets of five reps, mm -hmm. and then you can work your way up from there if you want to. Um, but it's all about what you're you're building up core strength, and that's it, there's no question that this is definitely a core movement. But it's actually a lot of the focus is on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, so <coughs> you're building up that that shoulder endurance. So you could really, I mean, you could theoretically work your way, way up to 15, 10, 15 reps. Mm -hmm. It's going to take you forever to get through them. And, uh, yeah. you know, and it's definitely going to wear down that shoulder. But that's really, more than anything, that's what's going to get tired. But there's nothing wrong with doing that. But it's, you know, you can, as with anything else, wherever you want your rep range to be mm -hmm. is where it's going to be. If you, can, if you feel like you can comfortably get through three reps, but that's about where you get to the point where the shoulder gets a little wonky, mm -hmm. stop there. Do, do a couple sets of three and eventually work your way up. Just to summarize everything that you've shown me today, it seems like kettlebells are the ultimate core workout, is it not? Because everything we've done has been straight from the core. The core is utilizing is utilized in just about every movement we're doing with the kettlebells. I, it, I wouldn't say it's the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. There are many, many, many different applications mm -hmm. when it comes to fitness. It, this is one tool, mm -hmm. and you can do, it's a multi-tool. You can Ooh. do you know, very many things with this, but <clears throat> as with anything else, there are other, other options as well. But yes, your core is getting a lot of work within these movements, um, both, both in stabilization mm -hmm. and in movement, and in building you know, some of that prime movement as well. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic tool to use for the core. Good to have you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Levi? Cut. If you've made it all the way through this episode, then you have a pretty good understanding of the basics of kettlebells. I've created this workout based on the moves that you learned in this episode. I challenge you to give it a shot. If you'd like to learn more about my upcoming movie, please visit IWantAbsMovie.com. You can also learn more about what Nick is doing with kettlebells at WarriorStrength.com.